You are tuned into Lemon Relax. Hey y'all, what up? It's your boy Tyson. We're back with another podcast. Today's podcast is going to be my thoughts on B. Simone. Whew. And we're going to take it all the way back to the beginning. <laughs> So with that being said, real quick, welcome family. If you on the Anchor family, welcome. Podcast, Apple, uh, Spotify, all that. Welcome, y'all. Welcome back, me YouTube family. I hope y'all doing good tonight. So her post on being a God-fearing Christian, I have personal sentiments that I'm not going to get too deep with on that. Um, y'all know, if y'all know me, if you've been following me for any time, you know, I used to be a Christian about 10, it's been about 10 or 12 years. Um, me and my family... We haven't spoken a year almost now, so I don't know where they're at now with their spirituality, but I know for me, um, and at the time, both of us, we were being more, we were on a more spiritual path than a religious path. So, you know, we still believe, you know, we don't believe the earth just came out of nowhere or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? We just didn't believe that it was the white man in the cloak that did it. So, um... Also, with that, so with that being said, also, I don't expect, like, just because somebody's black, you, we're not going to all have the same causes. We're not, literally. So I, I don't expect much out of her. And also, I don't feel her response was as bad as others. I mean, do y'all remember Trina? And then do y'all remember Kaya? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, but real quick, the baddest basket hell, like, bruh. <laughs> Florida people just drag different. Like, I hope I don't ever have to get in no roast battle with no Florida person, because I'm just going to fight you. That's it. We just going to fight. <laughs> Nigga, square up. Squat up. What's up? So, at any rate, moving on, the whole nine to five thing. <sighs> Now, um, I'm going to be honest, I'm slowly not feeling Nick Cannon. Um, and I hope this doesn't void me going on wild and out. <laughs> but um, his comments on talking black and sleeping white that he made a couple years back. And this brother was trying to educate him on why that's erroneous. And he just wasn't letting him talk. But um, his comments on talking black and sleeping white, I, I didn't feel I wasn't feeling that shit. And um, that's not nothing new in the pro-black sector. That's that's a, a lot of these niggas, they fighting to be able to sleep with their white women. Like, let's just keep it real. That's what a lot of the, some of the civil, uh, uh, civil war movement, all that shit was about. So let's keep it real. Um, we, we heard about Martin. And again, that's not to deface his legacy. That's just it is what it is. Um... But, and if you haven't heard about Martin, then look that up on your own time. But nonetheless, um, his comments on that, I, I wasn't feeling them. And I also do not look at a black man who sleeps out of his community, outside of his community, the same as I do a black man who's with a black woman. That's a false equivalency to me. Not saying you can't be pro-black, but it's not the same. And you shouldn't be the loudest pro-black in the room. Just my opinion. Um your lifestyle conflicts with your um battle you, you know pro pro black is a look it's a battle it's a way of life and your lifestyle if you're dating interracially it conflicts with that so you can't be the loudest pro black in the room so um and that's a fact that's not even my opinion that's just a fact <laughs> so with that being said next also the way he conducted the interview now um with b simone now as far as the whole interview, I haven't seen the whole thing, but I'm speaking specifically about the clip. Like, he kind of pressured her. Like, he's the one who said nine to five. She's not the one who said that. And then even when she answered him, it was kind of like, a, eh, yeah, sure. Y'all, sorry, I'm about to adjust the mic real quick. It was like, a, eh, yeah, sure. You know, kind of, yeah. Like, it wasn't really like a, yeah, yeah. Or it was like a, yeah, yeah. It wasn't really like a, yeah, I can't fuck them nine to five niggas, can't do it. Um, so with that being said, I feel like uh, too many people and black people in particular approach shit with emotions instead of logic. Um, and then also black men were overly emotional with their response. Like y'all was looking like straight up bitches. I'm just going to be honest. And, um, Tory Lanez, I got my eye on Tory Lanez because, uh, this your second time being in some women's stuff. I give you Shakana. She should not have been crying over Gucci, but uh, this your second time, bruh. 
looking a little looking a little mm, over there so at any rate um, y'all know I'm really keen on men address men and women address women. However, I also understand that some men just ain't going to address men, period, which is why I can't really get onto the women for not addressing the women only. But with that being said, let's break this down logically. The life of a nine to five worker. You're on a set schedule. You have a boss. You clock in. You work your time. You clock out. Unless you have an emergency, you stay for that whole shift. You do the same thing day in, day out. You may have one or two off days in the week if you're lucky. That's at least what it seems like nowadays with all this corona stuff going on and the shortage of people. So at any rate, the life of a business person is nothing like that. A business person, you are your own boss. You are not clocking into anybody. You have your own set schedule that you set on your own you even file your taxes differently depending on what industry you are in and i live both of these lifestyles i am a nine to five worker i also have my own private business and i also as i've told you i do uber and grubhub and i've done my own private business business as well i'm about to take a business trip in the next what is it tomorrow i think I think i have a business trip tomorrow that i'm going to take so with that being said B. Simone simply said she needs a nigga who can be able to hop on a plane with her at 3 a.m. And this, for me, I didn't need her to come out and respond. In fact, if she was going to respond, I wish that she would have came out and said, oh, well, you guys, that's just my preference. That's what she should have said. Um, and we'll pick back up on the word preference. We're going to go deep with this one. That's what she said. <laughs> but let me relax. So at any rate, um, I live both of those lifestyles. And also, let me touch on my dating requirements. I am not going to be with a girl who's simply working at McDonald's. That's just not enough for me. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't mind pulling in most of the bread. But she's going to have to be doing a little bit more than McDonald's. Now, if she at McDonald's and in college, or, well, let's etch McDonald's out. Because they... they they cheating their workers real hard. Um, but a, a basic minimum, you know, $9, $10 an hour job in school. I can deal with that. You know what I'm saying? But I can't deal with you just slaving away for eight hours, $8 an hour at a place. That's my preference. There's nothing wrong with that. I didn't diss fast food workers or necessarily say, uh, you, that wasn't a diss. That's just who I want to date. It, uh, that's who she wants to date. So, moving on from there, the real beef with this situation is, excuse me, she is a black woman who dare to have standards. How dare that bitch? That's really what it is. And then if y'all want to take it a step further, your preference doesn't want most of you. That's really what it is. She's the light-skinned girl. Hey, you guys, if you would like to hear the rest of this podcast, please check me out on anchor.fm, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other podcasting platforms. Thank you for listening.